Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on legal troubles mounting for former President Donald Trump. A Mar-a-Lago employee accused of assisting in a cover-up in the classified papers case is facing a judge, as a grand jury could hand down an indictment for Trump's role in the Capitol riot. And the suspected Long Island serial killer is in court this morning for the first time since his indictment, as his estranged wife speaks out about the accusations. You're going to see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Boys, where have you been? We're just running errands. That's it? The month begins with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem on August 2nd and the toothsome Meg 2 The Trench on August 4th. This looks like a bite. Search the ship everywhere. August 11th finds the very scary Dracula film The Last Voyage of the Demeter creeping into theaters alongside the fast-paced racing action of Gran Turismo. Whatever you can imagine, I can create. Yeah, that's more like it. And August 18th pits the super-powered Blue Beetle against the potty-mouthed pooches of Strays. Hoping movie theater air conditioning stays on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, the home of the San Antonio Spurs, reportedly getting a new name. What KSAT viewers have picked so far in our online poll coming up. Plus, important news if you're feeling burned out or depressed. Some key differences you should know. Things are going to have a big impact on your work-life balance. And checking Transguide right now, 410 at Cherry Ridge looks good. So does 281 at Loop 410, uh, close to San Antonio International Airport. Quite a bit of traffic at Highway 90 and Couples. We'll see if there are any troubles coming up in a matter of minutes. New this morning, San Antonio fire crews had their hands full across the Alamo City. What we've been able to learn about two fires so far from overnight. Plus, you're robbing people of their livelihood, of their ability to generate, their ability to provide for their families. A shopping center near Inger Park Mall on the city's west side still dealing with fallout after being hit by thieves. How businesses are still being impacted one week later. Outside with live cam, we've got to be realistic about the month we're in now. Of course, August in South Central Texas, uh, searing heat pretty much all month long. But we'll look ahead anyway with Mike Oster Hage. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Yes, it is 6 a.m. on your Tuesday, August 1st. That's right. Happy August. I know, you know, traditionally it's a little hotter this month, mm -hmm. but we are you know, kind of creeping closer to when things will change. Mm -hmm. Baby steps on hot coals with Mike Osterhage. Good morning, Mike. I like how hot everybody's coals. trying to just, you know, spin this as, as positively as possible. <laughs> what so. else can yeah. we do, right? Yeah, trying to say that glass is half full before it evaporates in this yeah. heat. So, uh, yeah, we are getting closer to the vernal equinox and everything else, but still we got to put up with the, the forecast first of all. And just like yesterday, we're picking up right where July left off at 103 and that's what the high temperature is going to be later on today. Heat index right now is 82, 84 Candy Lake. So we have our morning humidity. That's the usual cycle and at least I, I keep emphasizing this. We are going through that cycle, so the humidity does drop down in the afternoon, which is one saving grace. Mold is on the low side, and we do have heat advisories, the orange area, excessive heat warnings up around Austin and extreme northeast, and this is up until 9 o'clock tonight, so it just remains hot. Yesterday, the heat advisories were only up till 8 o'clock, but it's so hot in the afternoon, it takes that much longer to cool down even in the evening. So this doesn't even... It, it's not like we have those high heat index readings in the afternoon. It's just plain old temperatures are going to be so searing hot. We are going to be working our way up through the 80s and already 91 degrees by 11 o'clock this morning, 94 at noon. And then we top off at 103 like yesterday. That will tie the record. And we are going to be talking about tying or setting records each and every day the rest of the week. What about the first weekend of August? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities. Steven, so it was a little busier yeah. this morning still? And, well, still busy, Mike. And in fact, we have uh, new issues that have popped up according to text out. Let's get a quick look. Uh, Trans guide not showing uh, too bad of shots there. 37 at Southeast Military. But I want to get you to our map. And I have to talk to our friends at Trans guide about this problem. 35 southbound at Zazamoto Street. We do have a new crash reported. It's not causing issues just yet, but we have entered 6 a.m. So this is one of the busier hours on the roadway. Watch out for crews if you have to travel through that area. I know that they have some cameras 
course, and that particular stretch of 35. So I will reach out to them and see if we can get a shot of the conditions out there. But as we give you a wide look of our map, it's going to be the same story here. A little bit of a busy start, sure, but we have a lot of construction that's still taking place, as you can see behind me. We'll talk about what's happening a little bit later on. And again, I'll reach out to our friends at TransGuide to get a shot of the conditions at 35 at Zazamora. I'll have an update on that coming up in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. You this morning, fire investigators say lithium ion batteries are to blame for a fire at a home on San Antonio's north side. This happened just after midnight at a home on Verona Way, not far from Redland Road. Fire crews say the people at the home woke up to the smell of smoke and found fire in the garage. No one was hurt. This is the second fire that the San Antonio Fire Department has responded to this week that was caused by lithium ion batteries. Also this morning, firefighters say an AC unit could have sparked a house fire just north of downtown. This one happened around 2 a.m. in the 800 block of Fresno near Blanco and I-10. Fire crews were able to knock out the fire pretty fast. However, flames left a big hole in the side of the house. No injuries were reported to us. The two dogs believed to be responsible for viciously attacking a 13-year-old boy last week have been euthanized. And right now, the 13-year-old is still recovering. Last Thursday, Bear County Sheriff's deputies arrived to this home on Escalante Run after the boy was apparently attacked by the family's dogs. The child was airlifted to the hospital while deputies removed seven dogs from the home. Five of those dogs are still in quarantine. It will be up to Animal Control Services to determine whether to label the dogs as dangerous. This morning, the power is finally back on at a shopping center over on Wurzbach Road. It all comes after coffer thieves left businesses in the dark for over a week. As John Paul Barajas reports, even though the lights are back on, business owners there are still feeling the impact. The lights are on, but the doors at Szechuan House are still closed. The restaurant and neighboring businesses were forced to temporarily shut down after copper thieves broke into their building's electrical box. You're robbing people of their livelihood, of their ability to generate, their ability to provide for their families. Owner Christina Zhao's frustrations are echoed by her fellow tenants at the shopping center behind Ingram Park Mall. It really takes a uh, stress on people that are like income based. You're kind of like without a paycheck. Uh, and your rent still do. For Bridget Rivera and her salon, power being restored means she can start to call clients back. But it's not that simple for a restaurant forced to throw I out know, food. We're still not back up yet. So okay. we've never been here before. Oh. We're like, we want to try this place. Zhao tells us they need to clean, reorder food, and prepare it. She hopes to reopen Thursday so her business can cut into this setback, which she's still trying to calculate. That's a quarter of our month. If you think about it that way, so, you know, rent is still due, electricity still has to be paid, even though we don't have, we didn't have it for a week. You know. And this isn't the first time that shopping center has dealt with this type of incident. Tenants tell us that about a year ago, the copper from their air conditioning units was actually stolen. And they also add during this most recent repair process, somebody tried to steal the copper again, but was not successful. As for San Antonio police, they are aware of all these incidents and they are investigating. John Paul Barajas, Kisa, 12 News. New Braunfels police are asking for your help finding two suspected burglars. Officers believe the two people you're about to see on your screen stole a blue Ford F-150, four trailers, four riding lawnmowers, and a generator from a storage facility in New Braunfels. If you know anything that could help lead either of these two to, to either of these people, call Comal County Crime Stoppers at 830-620-8477. It's in the red banner at the top of the screen. Tips that lead to an arrest could get you a reward of up to $4,000. Topping your morning headline to suspected mass shooting plot thwarted in the state of Tennessee. And right now we are learning more about the armed suspect. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert tells us, police say he tried to enter a Jewish school but couldn't get inside. This morning, police in Tennessee say the man in this picture was stopped from carrying out what they call a potential mass shooting. Today is a great example of very alert, vigilant officers trying to protect the city. I personally truly believe that we have avoided a tragedy. The image showing a man in a blue shirt holding a gun was taken at the Margolin Hebrew Academy, the only Orthodox Jewish school in Memphis. Police say he tried to gain access to the building, but the school's security measures prevented him from getting inside. Beck did try to enter the building armed with the gun. 
When he could not gain entry, he fired shots outside the school. No one was injured when the suspect opened fire outside the building. Police spotted the suspect in his vehicle a short time later, not far from the school. According to investigators, officers shot the man when he stepped out holding that gun. Oscar Gomez said his three sons were home when the suspect was shot in their neighborhood. They throw themselves in the floor so they will not get hit. I have never, never experienced anything like this. It's, it's, like I say, it's very concerning. The suspect was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police did not immediately identify him, but local congressman Steve Cohen said the suspect is a former student at the school. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. In other headlines, new numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics show last week shows the economy is cooling off. Some experts are hoping to avoid a recession, and they think the best approach is a soft landing. So the Fed is looking to use higher interest rates to ease price pressure without causing the economy to collapse, in theory. Inflation is still higher than the Fed would like, and there's still a chance interest rates could hike up again by next month. Back here at home, students who are part of the Cybersecurity Magnet Program at Northeast ISD got some hands-on experience this summer. They have been working on computers and networks over the past few weeks. So 11th grader Corinne Kinlaw was one of the 10 students chosen for the summer internship with the district's IT department. She says it gave her a deeper look at what she's been learning in the classroom and even the everyday technology that she uses. She already has several IT certifications as part of the Magnet program, and now she can add this experience as a job to her resume. I like to go into cybersecurity, and I'm kind of looking into digital forensics right now. That's where it interests me, uh, problem solving, and not always having one solution to a problem. You can read about things, you can see things, you can see illustrations of things, and even uh, look at visualizations. But the ability to actually see it, touch it, learn from it, um, and actually apply what you have learned. About 35 students applied for the internship program, which is in its first year. Students also worked with technicians, engineers, and system administrators. Right now, 10 minutes past the hour, 78 degrees. Coming up later on GMA, check your calendar and get ready for the best unofficial holiday of the year. It's Doggest First. GMA will be celebrating all the shelter dogs looking for their forever homes. That's starting at 7 a.m. After the break, important news if you're feeling burned out or depressed. I think we're confused about whether it's depression or whether it's burnout because we use the terms really colloquially. That's fair. Some key differences you should know. Things that could have a big impact on your work-life balance. Most people burned out with the weather, but taking a look out there with live cam, we're at 78 degrees for now. Not too bad. So, you know, maybe early mornings and late evenings to relieve all that heat. We'll be right back. 614, welcome back. This morning we're talking about the difference between depression and burnout. It is important to know the difference to make sure you maintain a good work-life balance. Sarah Costa has some suggestions from a local mental health expert. Burnout versus depression. Both can lead to unhealthy habits. That's why it's so important to learn the differences. It can make a huge difference in how you help yourself. We spoke to local mental health expert, Tally Dolge. You really have to be able to differentiate the two, even if the two overlap in symptoms. The American Psychiatric Association defines burnout as emotional exhaustion and negative feelings towards things you usually do. Depression is defined as a medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, think, and act. Depression is all-encompassing versus burnout being something that is really related to one specific thing. Most burnout takes place within the workplace, but it can also happen in your personal life. Just keep in mind, burnout can turn into depression if it's not addressed. Dolge says, talk to your boss about taking a day off if you need to and take a break during your work day. Also, it's important to set boundaries in your work and home life. And remember, you're not alone. Let's normalize the fact that we all at some point will go through some form of burnout. If you think you're experiencing depression, Dold recommends seeing a therapist. They can talk you through it and if needed, get you on the right medication to regulate your feelings and emotions. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 615. And it looks like there's some flashing lights at I-35 at Zarzamara. Yeah, let's check in with Steven. 
Yeah, this is uh, the crash that I mentioned earlier, guys. This is actually in the frontage road, so it's not impacting the main lanes. But let's get a look there at Trans Guide because you do see that we have first responders that have made the area, and hopefully we'll see some progress there. But again, not causing a slow band if you're heading southbound along I-35. But definitely watch for those crews out there, and let's hope everyone's doing okay. It's tough to make out to see if there are emergency or pardon me, uh, ambulance or paramedics out there on the scene. But you see on the southbound lanes of 35, we're not spotting any slowdown, so that's the good news to report. But it seems that more issues are popping up now that we've entered the 6 a.m. hour. Let's take a drive back over here to 281. There's actually a stall via bus that's been reported in the northbound lanes, not too far from Thousand Oaks Drive. I haven't seen a text hero trucks out there just yet, but I do know that our friends at Transguide have their eyes on it, so we'll keep you posted as soon as we know that the, there is progress being made. And don't forget, while we're talking about 281, we actually have paving work that's going to start again uh, around 9 this morning should finish at 3 in the afternoon. And don't forget, this takes us to the weekend, Saturday, August 5th, alternating lane closures along the frontage roads in both directions. That's north and south at Bolvardi Road. But you can scan this QR code, takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. All the information you just saw on your screen, you could have it at the fingertips on your phone. Just scan that QR code, takes you to our page and lets you know what's happening on our roadways. But let's hope we'll see some progress out there along 35. It's been a pretty busy morning. It's mm -hmm. not been dreadfully busy, but we know crews are out there, so be on the lookout. We will. Okay. And show us pretty pictures instead of talking about the heat. Yeah, show us Okay. <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. It is the day of the full moon. It is the full sturgeon moon. And a lot of folks are sending some gorgeous pictures. It's going to be great looking oh, wow. tonight as well. Of course, the moon rises at this time when it's in the full phase, just as the sun is setting. So look off to the west for a beautiful sunset. Look off to the east for a beautiful moon rise. What a great picture. Looks like something out of for October with the trees in the foreground right there. So thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect pictures. Wait, you see the one coming up next half hour. Spectacular picture. And we've got, uh, well, look, is it starting to lighten up a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. The sun's not going to be coming up for about another half hour, 35 minutes or so. And you can see there are a couple of uh, clouds out there as of right now. Yesterday, 103 and... There is nothing but triple digits on the map yesterday in all the reporting areas. Laredo got up to 107 and pretty much the same situation today and maybe even a couple of spots that won't hit 100. Kind of doubt that, but in your backyard may come close to it. But 103 again is the forecast out there at the airport. Yesterday tied the record. Today is going to tie the record. The nice thing is, though, we're not going to see the temperatures, the the dew point, excuse me, the heat index readings, I should say, getting up that much above the actual air temperature because we will have those lower dew points in the afternoon. Also, now there is a small chance to see a stray shower try and come on in here from the east around that big clockwise flow around the, the high pressure area. If one or two of those does pop up, great. I wouldn't really count on it too much, but it's there is that small chance for that. Quick check on the tropics. Yesterday, the Hurricane Center had that batch of clouds. Pretty much, they're almost looking at it as a sure thing of development. Now, they've kind of backed off on that a little bit, but there's about a 60% chance that this would develop, although it's working its way straight up to the north, so it's not going to have any sort of uh, any sort of effect on the United States. We could, I mean, not, we don't want a tropical system coming in here, but the rain from that sure would be nice if it sat on top of us for a while. Uh, as far as the forecast for the next seven days, those top numbers, those are the records for each respective day and the rest of the week, either tying or setting new records and these triple digit temperatures are going to be sticking around all through next week. And no rain. No rain. <laughs> nope. Period on that sentence. Yeah. No rain. Thank you, Mike. 619, 78 degrees on your Tuesday. And just ahead, the wife of a suspected serial killer is speaking out, saying everything is destroyed after his arrest. That's next in your GMA First Look. I'm Jason, I'm living with HIV, and I'm on Cabinuva. It helps keep me undetectable. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete long-acting HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva is two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's really nice not to have to rush home and take a daily HIV pill. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or if you're taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. 
pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Ready to treat your HIV in a different way? Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. Every other month, and I'm good to go. In this morning's GMA First Look, suspected Gilgo Beach serial killer Rex Hewerman is expected in court as his estranged wife Asa Ellera breaks her silence about the wrenching fallout from her husband's arrest, telling ABC News, my children have been crying themselves to sleep and I've been crying myself to sleep too. Her attorney says Ellerup and her family are living a waking nightmare. It's taken all their lives and tossed it upside down. Ellerup sharing these photos showing the aftermath, saying everything is destroyed. It was traumatic. You know, leave a house in one state and return to have everything from couches cut open to bath bathtubs, you know, sliced apart to walls broken into. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're live from outside the courthouse where Rex Hewerman is scheduled to appear. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, Long Island, New York. The San Antonio airport is getting bigger, a new terminal, and hopefully more direct flights in and out of SA, but to where? In a new episode of Case It Explains, we're going to break down the list of key destinations local leaders are going after and why they believe this $2.5 billion project could benefit the entire city, whether you fly or not. So you can watch it right now on KSET.com, KSET Plus, and the KSET YouTube page. In your morning consumer headlines, new electric vehicle plans for a major oil company, Exxon, is reportedly in talks with Tesla and other automakers about supplying them with lithium, the main component in electric vehicle batteries. Demand for the substance has tripled in recent years as more electric cars are sold. Meanwhile, an update to a story from yesterday. The large and bright X logo installed on top of the San Francisco headquarters of the company, formerly known as Twitter, has been taken down. And the city has been has fined X for putting the logo on the roof without a permit. It's time to say goodbye to the old school incandescent light bulbs. Starting today, August 1st, retailers can no longer sell them for common household use. Now you'll only be able to buy those LED bulbs, which use less energy. They cost more than the older bulbs, but they last up to 50 times longer. And the time now, 626 and 78 degrees for now. Before we head to break, scan this QR code because we want to hear from you this morning on GMSA. The home of the Spurs is reportedly getting a new name. A source tells KSAP the Spurs have reached a deal with Frost Bank to take over the arena's naming rights. This would mark the third name for the nearly 21-year-old building on the east side. So we want to know what should the Spurs call their arena under this potential naming rights deal with Frost Bank. You can vote right now by scanning the QR code on your screen. Voting also open on ksat.com slash poll. We'll share results when we come back. This morning on GMSA, the home of the San Antonio Spurs is reportedly getting a new name. What KSAT viewers have picked so far in our online poll coming up. And we already know what you've named this summer, but we can't say that on TV right now. You take a live look downtown. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 1st. Hi, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Yeah, yes, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people struggling with the heat and it's going to continue. I, I was going to say it's a, been a pretty typical summer, especially when you compare it to last summer, right, Mike Osterhage? Well, yeah, I mean, if that's now, you know, when you had the hottest July on record and this was like right oh, behind it in second place. Mm -hmm. And then the problem is, too, is this is going to continue. So August is picking up right where July left off. No, this is not normal by any means. Normal high is 97. We're already going to be up there in the early afternoon hours. We've got a couple of clouds that have uh, decided to work their way on in here. Temperatures at 79, 2.73. So, yeah, you notice the humidity when you step outside, but at least that number does drop down in the afternoon. So even though we're going to have numbers, high temperatures that will come close to what we had in early July, we're not going to have the afternoon humidity sticking around. That was the big problem way back then was when we just couldn't get rid of the humidity. And we had those heat index readings way up there, like 115 higher than that. It's not going to be the situation uh, today and throughout this stretch of hot weather. 83 is what it feels like in Castroville right now. 84 at Canyon Lake and 80 down the road in Divine. Mold is on the low side. Update account is going to come out in about an hour or so. 
heat advisories in effect up until nine o'clock tonight. So that's been extended one hour because it takes that much longer to cool down. And again, this is not because of the high heat index readings. Just plain old temperatures are so high today. We are going to make it up to uh, the low hundreds again. So warm and humid this morning and then 103 just like yesterday and just like yesterday ties the record for today's date. There's a small chance for a shower off to the east today. Just a mention of it. I wouldn't get excited at all. It's just going to be blisteringly hot for the vast majority of us. Low hundreds remain the rest of the week. More records are either going to be tied and or broken. And this will be the situation through the weekend and through what looks like most of next week. Still triple digit temperatures. Just got to grin and bear it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's the latest? Well, Mike, I'm going to give you two reasons why I love this shot. First, that crash that we saw there at 35 at Zazamora has cleared out along the frontage road. Wasn't really causing an issue for drivers that were making their way on that exit, but uh, we did want to hope everyone's doing okay out there. But second reason is just look at that sunrise out there. Folks that are heading northbound along 35 have a nice start to the day, but our friends at Transguide switched the cameras on us just like that. 35 at Von Army. We have a situation that just happened here from Transguide. Not sure what's causing this backup, but let's take a look there. Bumper to bumper at this time. We'll find out exactly what's happening, and this is not a good situation. Again, our friends at Transguide just provided us this shot, so we'll see exactly what's taking place out there, and we'll keep you posted. May have to send a push alert about that incident in the next few minutes or so. But 35 Southbound is also motors where we had that crash reported initially, and you could see that it wasn't causing any issue because it wasn't on the main lane, so that's good news. But we're seeing further problems, our problems further down along I-35 near Von Army, and we'll find out what's going on in just a few minutes. Let's take a drive back over here. We still have that Saul Vio bus reported along 281 northbound at Thousand Oaks. Uh, this is not causing any issues either, but we tend to see Saul Vio buses every now and then. So watch out for any Texas Hero trucks that may be out there working to resolve the situation. Now, the wide view of the map doesn't show any problems here in town, but check it out where we saw that back up there is 35 northbound right there at Von Army. So we'll find out what's taking place out there. But with in terms of these travel times and other communities, we're not seeing any delays just yet. I-10 westbound heading in from Seguin. It's a 30-minute commute. 33 along 87 northbound if you're heading in from Laverdia. And right now, looks like about a 30-minute drive time if you're traveling in from Floresville. But I want to get it back here to Transguide. This is uh, something that just popped up on a rotation here, so doesn't look good from what I'm seeing here on these Transguide cameras. I'll step out of the studio, find out what's going on, and I'll have an update coming up in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. And go ahead and take a look at this big mess on 35 North that happened earlier. So this was a scene overnight between Walsam and Randolph. It has now been cleared. We can tell you it caused a big backup for miles, and we do know there was some type of crash and that power was knocked out for some people in that area. Other news this morning over the past month, San Antonio police say they've responded to about six calls for cash being stolen from ATMs. The latest one happened yesterday at a Bank of America ATM on West Commerce near General McMullen. All the break-ins had similarities, all involved chase banks. The thieves' tools were stolen trucks, chains, and hooks, which were also left behind. Despite the similarities in these recent crimes, San Antonio police are not yet calling this a crime spree. And looking ahead, testimony continues later today in the trial of a man accused of opening fire during last year's MLK Day celebration. The suspect is O.L. Wallace, and he was 18 at the time of the shooting. In opening statements, prosecutors said that Wallace was dropped off at the MLK Day celebration and several witnesses saw him open fire into the crowd into the direction of an intended target. That person was not hit. However, five other people were, and one of those people died. The defendant, O.L. Wallace Jr., is guilty as charged of all the counts, but specifically of felony murder because he was the impetus, right? He was the cause of this whole situation. Meanwhile, Wallace's defense team says this was self-defense and that Wallace only fired his gun after someone shot at him first. Testimony in this case is expected to last all week. Starting today, everyone, whether they're gay, bisexual or straight, will have to go through the same screening process when they donate blood. The Tal Texas Blood and Tissue Center says it's implementing new guidance from the Food and Drug Administration. For decades, gay and bisexual men were allowed only to donate blood if they hadn't had sex with men for three months. But months ago, the FDA announced it was changing that policy after looking at donor eligibility here in the U.S.
The home of the San Antonio Spurs is reportedly getting a new name. A source tells Kaset the Spurs have reached a deal with Frostbank to take over their arena's naming rights. So AT&T did not renew its naming rights deal in 2021. The Spurs have not made an official announcement or comment on the reported deal. Frostbank says it does not comment on rumors or speculation, but its statement did note the bank's history and helping bring the Spurs to San Antonio. So this would mark the third name for the nearly 21 year old arena on the city's east side. So we want to know what should the Spurs call their arena under the potential naming deal with Frost Bank. You can vote right now by scanning the QR code on your screen. So voting is also open at kset.com slash poll. Let's see where things stand right now. And Frost Bank Arena is uh, winning with 47%. Frost Bank Center coming at 17%, and the one I kind of like, Frost Forum, at 36%. Yeah, it's not too far behind Frost Bank Arena. There might be a shot right there. <laughs> you can still vote at KSAT.com. Well, lots of you talking about possible names on our KSAT Facebook page. Here are a few of them. Fred's <laughs> Fish Fry Center, Armed Forces Arena, HEB Stadium, Mission Arena as well. You can read more about this story on our website at KSAT.com. Hey, staying with sports, the month of August means high school football is back. Of course, hundreds of local players and coaches have hit the field for the official start of practice. So you might be wondering how on earth are they dealing with the extreme heat that we've all been feeling. Though the UIL has implemented several guidelines for schools during hot weather conditions, water must be on the field and readily available to athletes at all times. And it is recommended that a minimum of 10 minutes be scheduled for a water break every half hour. We've been preaching hydration all summer and off season, making our guys, you know, carry around a gallon of water and just different things like that. Like you've got to stay hydrated, you've got to eat uh, right after workouts and all that stuff. Trainers and coaching staff are also keeping a close eye for signs of heat illness, including vomiting and fatigue. Our plants are struggling after enduring more than 30 days of triple digit temperatures so far this summer. So yesterday during our gardening with KSET segment, Sarah Costa showed us exactly how much water they need to stay alive. In case you missed it, you can watch it right now on KSAT.com. Just look for the story. Sarah also says there are other ways to help alleviate the stress of your plants. One way is providing them nutrients through a soil conditioner or compost twice a year. Mark Fanick, manager of Fanick's Nursery, explains why. The other thing that hurts plants is besides not enough water is just like us, we need to have protein to grow. And when you don't have enough nutrition, you feel weak and sick, plants will be the same way. So watch for color. If you have a dark green leaf plant and it starts to lighten up, that probably needs, needs more nitrogen, uh, more protein to get it growing again. And Sarah says she likes using an organic conditioner like Happy Frog, placing a new layer around her flower beds, especially where there are exposed roots. She also says pruning is key. When you prune your dried flowers or stems, you are not only promoting new growth, but also helping your plant conserve energy. On our website, she also details how to care for cacti and succulents in the summer heat. Right now, 640, 78 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up after the break. You need something. I know it. Maybe it might be some 70s nostalgia in a live show. Ooh, there's a show for that. It's coming up. the Barbie movie. If you want a live show that celebrates 70s nostalgia, come on down to the Harlequin Theater and watch Vinyl Vault. We want you to feel a sense of nostalgia. We want you to feel excited going back to those 70 days, quite frankly, your glory days for some folks, and just really having a great time enjoying and hearing everything and sing along. <laughs> A lot of the songs too are kind of your stereotypical pub songs almost that you'll hear on the river or you know that you know everybody sings along to so that was I kept that in mind when I was putting the show together I wanted people just to come and and be able to sing along with us because that's the coolest feeling when you're on the stage and you hear the audience singing back to you it's, it's amazing Yes, we are on an Air Force base and there are some requirements such as making sure that you um, let us know by Tuesday if you're coming the weekend before because you have to get access um, to the Air Force base. But by all means, it's open to everyone. Come dressed up, come show out. We run from August 4th until the 19th, so there's plenty of time. This show is very groovy. For tickets, visit the far out website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News.
The Barbie fun continues this morning on GMSA as seniors around town continue to celebrate the summer film. So these are residents at the Adante Independent Living on the north side of town. The video was done as part of a contest. The community also hosted a Barbie Expo showing off some of the classic dolls. Wow, all right. Oh, so now cool. event organizers at all these facilities have to raise their game too, right? Yeah, I love it. And what a fun time. I mean, I know it's a competition as well, but I mean, at least you get to do all this. Oh, they're having a blast. Aww. Time check, 645 on your Tuesday. Let's check back with Steven with the problems that we're having on I-35. Yeah, bumper to bumper traffic out here and our friends at Transguide are getting a closer shot for us. It does look like a tow truck is out there on the scene or maybe a text out here a truck. Here's the thing. We know that there is construction taking place along 35 over on the southwest side. That should have wrapped up around five this morning and I didn't see any issues out there when I came in, but we do see this big stretch of bumper to bumper traffic as you're seeing right behind me from Transguide. And we do know that there's at least a stall reported right near Benton City Road along 35 northbound. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I said southbound. It's the northbound lanes where we see that red and yellow buildup out there. So if you're heading into San Antonio, this could cause some issues for your commute. I'm going to keep a close eye on this, but again, it does look like there may be a stall vehicle holding folks up or maybe some of those construction crews that are still out out there working to wrap up their project. Either way, watch out as you make your drive into town because more closures are expected. We still have this one. Yep, 35 Southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. That closure that stems from a fire that happened late last month, and it's been there for quite a while and no word yet on when that will reopen, but be on the lookout if you have to take that exit. It's going to be closed. Giving you a wide look at the map, it's been a pretty busy morning over here in the traffic department as we keep a, give you a look at what you can expect for that drive time and expect to see more delays if you have to travel along I-10 and Kendall County because we have the maintenance work that will pick up again. This starts around nine in the morning, but don't forget today is the final day for that project, at least for this portion. It should wrap at three this afternoon. Various mainland closures in both directions at scenic loop road, but want to get it back here to that nasty shot. Yeah, 35 uh, not looking great in the northbound lanes. In fact, I think that some people are actually exiting or trying to drive off uh, into the grass there. Don't do that. That is not safe. You want to make sure that you watch out for the flashing lights. And if you're stuck in the mess, you just have to pack some patience. Crews are out there, so watch out. We know that at least one lane is blocked. Tight corridor as well. You yeah. get a ticket for that. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a big no-no. Don't do that, guys. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> They're still doing it. I know. <laughs> it's a little bit of a, a parade there. Yeah. yeah. All right, Mr. McClellan will always take some beautiful pictures there around Woodlawn Lake. When I first saw this, I thought it looked like something from, like, Venice. Oh, wow. 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 Look at how gorgeous that. Now, again, those buildings are in different layers. Obviously, there's the, uh, the lighthouse there, Woodlawn Lake, and then the skyline off in the distance. But, wow, that's such a cool-looking picture. Super cool. Love, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, can't forget the star of the show there. This was taken last night, so technically it was the, the waxing gibbous moon, but it is full moon now and is the sturgeon super moon. So it's at its closest point in its orbit to Earth, and which is why it's called the super moon. Got some clouds right now off in the distance there. We're looking basically down to the kind of south. You can see there's the skyline off in the distance there over 10 at 410. And uh, temperatures are going to be warming up quickly, obviously, this morning. All the way through the 80s, we'll only be in the 80s probably for uh, a handful of hours before we warm up into the low 90s. 94 at noon. We'll still have some humidity hanging around here, so this is sometimes the toughest part of the day before that humidity really starts to drop down later on in the afternoon when we hit our high temperature of 103. So we're not going to have an extreme heat index to deal with later on this afternoon, just the plain old temperature, and that's why we have those heat advisories posted around the area. Satellite picture, well, don't have the low cloud showing up in that as of yet. But one thing, here's the big clockwise rotation. You can see those uh, clouds, those showers off there in New Mexico heading up to the north and sweeps around. And then on the front side of that rotation, we've got this disturbance coming in here from Louisiana into East Texas. And actually, a couple of computer models are trying to pick up a couple of showers to develop off to the northeast later on today. Just a mention of it. I wouldn't put a whole lot on that, but... Yeah, there is the chance to see one or two of them, which would be quite nice. Like I said, don't count on it. Other than that, nothing as far as any more rain in the forecast. Just a lot of hot temperatures each and every day this week. We're going to be up to 103 today. That will tie the record like yesterday. That same thing tomorrow, Thursday, each and every day happens to be 103 for the record high temperatures going through Friday. 
We either tie it or set them and stays in the low hundreds through next week as well. Goodness. Maybe some indications that the overall pattern starts to change a little bit by the end of next week, but yeah, it's going to be, I mean, this is a tough stretch. Yeah, we'll hold on until then. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 650, 78 degrees. It's a new month, and there are new ways you can get out and help our community. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to talk about some new KSET community events and how you can make a big difference. Outside with live cameras, we continue to watch northbound 35 at Devon Army and the big backups there. Don't forget, if you try to cross the median, not only can you get a ticket, you could spark a grass fire this time of year. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on legal troubles mounting for former President Donald Trump. A Mar-a-Lago employee accused of assisting in a cover-up in the classified papers case is facing a judge, as a grand jury could hand down an indictment for Trump's role in the Capitol riot. And the suspected Long Island serial killer is in court this morning for the first time since his indictment, as his estranged wife speaks out about the accusations. You're going to see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Looking ahead, Mega Millions has climbed over $1 billion before tonight's drawing. The prize has a cash option of $527 million. The jackpot is $1.05. Uh, nobody won Friday's drawing, obviously. Even though one got the top prize in the last drawing, five people won at least a $1 million. None of them were here in Texas. The next drawing is tonight during the night beat at 10. You can buy tickets until 9 o'clock tonight. Night owls are in for a treat tonight. You can check out a super moon, but not just any super moon, a blue moon. NASA says a blue moon actually has nothing to do with the color. A seasonal blue moon refers to the third full moon in a season that has four full moons. You can see it tonight and on August 30th. 6.55 on your Tuesday morning. Let's check back with Stephen about that mess on 35. Still spotting those big no-nos here, guys. Mark brought up a great point. Uh, please don't cross that barricade there where you see it or the barrier where uh, drive across off the access road onto the access road, I should say, especially during this time of year because you could cause a grass fire and you can also face a ticket. We're seeing plenty of folks doing that. Now take a look at the Transguide overhead signs. They tell you to merge left because there is some construction still taking place out there, but not only that, there's a stalled vehicle. So there's a lot happening along 35 northbound as you see right there behind me around Benton City Road. If you're at home, watch out. We're going to watch it closely, but just make sure to follow the rules of the road as well, Mike. And you know, the fire danger is all over the area because we haven't had any rain in forever. Basically, and we have those very low humidities later on in the afternoon. Some clouds starting off right now, 79 degrees, uh, mid upper 70s, low 80s around the area and 94 at noon. 103 high temperature is going to tie the record. Of course, heat advisories in effect, and this is not going to be changing anytime this week. It stays very hot. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get creative on staying cool. Hopefully so. Thank you, Mike. You guys have a nice day. See you back here at 9. GMA is next.